music, we gained a tremendous amount of knowledge on different topics such as music, melody, rhythm, and scales on the piano, and much. In addition to learning about the piano, we also studied the lives of famous composers through our weekly biographies, and we also analyzed music through the same assignments. However, as mentioned before, our main focus of this year was to study the piano and learn how to play songs. And so the Grade 8 music class has prepared a few videos to showcase our skills.
Mom, what are you doing? Dad's going out of his mind. He'll be all right. The whole hospital's turned upside down looking for you. But you're the only one who found me. How'd you get up here? There's a hole in the fence. I know, but how did you get up here? The steps nearly killed me. I'm not sure. It's a good spot. Wonder more people don't get up here. They don't know about the hole. Shouldn't you be at your party? I was until dad called and told me you vanished. He'll be annoyed. Dad? No, what's his name? You know his name. What? What's it? What is it again? Gordon, Gormand. Garen. That's right, Garen. Sounds like some kind of rash. Oh no, I got a nasty case of Garen on my arse. Mom, he's my husband. More fool you. I always liked that other one, Simon. He was... What? Considerate. He was always so nice to me. He probably fancied you. Me? Really? Really. But I'm twice his age. Trust me. You know, Gary reminds me too much of someone else. Who? My husband. That's all right. You try being married to him for 40 years. Come on, we better get you back. I'm not going back. Don't be silly, Mom. Come on. Helen, I'm not going back. I hate that awful room full of all that stuff. People keep ringing me and saying, what can I bring you? I say, don't bring me anything. I don't want any more things. Beautiful clothes. They look very expensive. They are. I guess Gorman's good for something. Maybe too. How did, did you work out it? How did you work out where I was? It wasn't hard. New Year's Eve. Where else would you be? My chair, my view. Surprised you remembered where it was. Come on, Mom. It hasn't been that long. Five years. Five? Really? Mm -hmm. I still remember when you first brought me here. I was eight years old. Long time ago. Twenty years ago. I remember, like it was yesterday, we got here just as the sun was going down. My legs got tired, so you had to carry me up the last 50 steps. And I kept asking, what is it, Mom? What are we here? He just smiled and said, I'm going to my chair. The best view in the city. I remember. And I kept asking, but what are we going to see? And he wouldn't answer. He just put your finger over my lips and said, You'll see, my love. And when it got dark, he pointed to the sky and said, look. And suddenly the sky was full of light, huge explosions of color, orange, pink, blue, green, and noise, terrible noise. I had to cover my ears. The explosions were so loud. I'll never forget it. Looking up at the clear night sky, the color and the stars, the muffled explosions ringing in my ear. It was my first fireworks. You never do forget your first fireworks. Did you ever bring dad here? Mm -hmm. No matter how much I loved your father, I needed to keep something to myself. And this was mine. My chair, my fireworks. But you brought me here. Back then when I thought of you, it wasn't like we were two people. We were the same person, so it made sense to bring you. I knew it would mean the same for you as it did to me. Maybe I thought you needed to see it. Do you still think that? That were one person? Sometimes. I knew you'd come. I wanted it to be just the two of us. Me and you. Our 20th anniversary fireworks. It's not fair to Dad. You should be here too. I've said my goodbyes to him. And besides, 40 years of being a wife, 30 years of being a mother. About time to just be me. Mom. This is my last fireworks, Helen. But I wanted to share them with you. If I can't play in favorites now, then when can I? Can I tell you something? Of course. Big secret. Biggest secret ever. Tell me. I've never told before. Not even your father, no. Cross my heart and hope to die. 
before you were born, I always wanted a boy. Mom! My own little tiger, Tim. My Percy Fiddler. Mom! But once you came out, once I saw the child you were, the woman you were growing into, I got down on my hand and knees and thanked God for sending me such a gift. I have been so lucky to have you as my daughter. Promise me something? What? That you'll bring her one day to watch the fireworks. You tell her about me. Of course. What was, what is, and what is about to be? Three generations of Pringles. Our name is Heath. My husband's name is Heath. Mom. My name is Pringle, and so is yours. Helen Pringle Heath. But it's actually Rogers now. But you're still a Pringle. <laughs> you are continuing in a long line of proud, strong Pringle women. I remember when we almost lost you, about a month before you were due. Don't remind me. I still get goosebumps. I woke up in the middle of the night, blood everywhere. Neil rushed me to the hospital. I was hemorrhaging. Seemed you were just too big for me to keep inside. But they thought they were going to lose you and me. I had to get you out right away. Jeez. And they did. Lucky for me. Your father sat beside my bed all night, just holding my hand. And I think that's why I made it through the night, hung in so long, just looking up at his eyes. I knew he wouldn't be able to bear losing me. So I pulled through. I survived. Like my mother before and her mother before. We're survivors just like you. And that's why I never had any more children. I feel like I should say sorry. Why? We already had the most wonderful child you could hope for. A beautiful baby girl. How could we begrudge God? Don't be sad, my daughter. We had the most fun we already had. I've had a good life, people who loved me, a husband who worshipped me, a daughter. I had a home, I had a family. I'm gonna miss you. And I'm gonna miss you too. And just don't be so successful in your work you forget to be a good mom. And if Gorman ever starts rooting around, tell him to piss off. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. 20 years. It all goes by so fast. I'm just gonna lie down for a little while. Wake me up when they start. No. Quiet now. No more words. Just no more words. No. It's starting. It's starting. Send out the chemist for 15 Kopecks worth of valerian drops and tell them to bring some drinking water into the director's office. This is the hundredth time I've asked. I'm absolutely tired. This is the fourth day I've been working without sleep. From morning to evening I work here, from evening to morning at home. <coughs> now I've got inflammation all over me. I'm hot and cold and I cough and my legs ache and there's something dancing before my eyes. Our scoundrel of a chairman, the brute, is going to read a report at a general meeting. Our bang, it's for the future. You'd think he was out again better. Uh, two, two, one, one, six, not seven. Next, six, not one, six. He just wants to throw dust into people's eyes, and so I sit here and work for him like a galley slave. This report of his poetic fiction and nothing more. And here, I've got to sit day after day and add figures. Gah! I can't stand it. That is one, three, seven, two, one, nine. 
He promised to reward me for my work. A gold charm and 300 rubles bonus. We'll see. Yes, but if my work goes all for nothing, then you'd better look out. If I lose my temper, I'm capable of committing some crime. So look out! Thank you. Thank you. I'm extremely grateful. This present, my dear colleagues, will be preserved to the day of my death as a memory of the happiest days of my life. Once more, I thank you. My dear, my respected current. Congratulations, Andrei Andreevich, on the 50th anniversary of our bank, and hope that- Thank you, my dear sir. I am very, very glad. Thank you for your service, for everything. If in the course of the time during which I have had the honor to be the chairman of this bank, anything useful has been done. The credit is due more than to anybody else, to my colleagues. Yes, 15 years. 15 years as my name is Chipushin. Where is my report? Is it getting on? Yes. There's only five pages left. Excellent. Will it be ready by three? If nothing occurs to disturb me, I'll get it done. Nothing of any importance is left. Splendid. Splendid. As my name is Chipushin, the general meeting will be at four. If you please, give me the first half. I'll bruise it quick. I base enormous hopes on this report. It's my, my firework. My firework as my name is Chipperson. Oh my hello, she tired. My guard kept on giving me trouble last night. All the morning I was running about and then these assignments, ovations, accreditations. I'm tired. Two, not, not, three, nine, two, mm, not. Can't see straight after all these figures. Three one six four one five. Not unpleasantness. This morning your wife came to see me and complained about you once again. Said that last night you threatened her and her sister with a knife. Karen, what do you mean by that? As an anniversary, Shibuchin, I ask you for a special favor. Please don't interfere in my family life. You are impossible, Karen. You're an excellent and respected man, but you behave to women like some scoundrel. I don't understand why you hate them. I wish I could understand why you love them so. The employees have just presented me with an album, and the directors, as I've heard, are going to give me an actress and several of them cup. Very nice. As my name is Chipperson, it isn't excessive. A sudden pump is essential to the reputation of the bank. You know everything? Of course. I composed the actress myself. And I brought the cup myself too. Well, then there was 45 rubles for the cover of the actress, but you can't do it without that. They never have thought of it for themselves. Look at the furniture. Just look at it. They say I'm stinking. <laughs> that all I want is that the locks on the door should be polished and that the employees should wear fashionable ties and that a fat hog porter should stand by the door. No, no, sirs. Polished locks and a fat porter mean a good deal. I can behave as like I am at home, eat, sleep like a pig, get drunk. Please don't make hints. Nobody making hints. As I was saying, at home I can live like a trace man and be up to any games I like. But here, everything must be grand. This is a bank. Here, everything must impress. My service to the bank has been just this. I've raised his reputation, a thing of immense stone, immense as my name is Chippishin. My dear man, a deputation of shareholders may come here any moment. And there you are, in felt boots, wearing a scarf, in some observably colored jacket. You might have put on a full coat, or at any rate, a dark jacket. My health matters more to me than your shareholders. I have an inflammation all over me. But you will admit, it is untidy. You spoil the ensemble. If the deputation comes, I can go and hide myself. It won't matter if... Seven one seven two one five not. I don't like untidiness myself. Seven two nine. I can't stand untidiness. It would have been bet. It would have been wiser of you not to have invited the ladies to today's anniversary dinner. Oh, that's nothing. I know you're gonna have the hall filled with them tonight to make a good show, but you look out, or they'll spoil everything. They cause all sorts of mischief and disorder. On the contrary, feminist society, 
elevate. Yes. Your wife seems intelligent, but on the Monday of last week, she let something off that upset me for two days. Well, that's enough. Enough. All that too dull for anniversary. Which reminds me, by the way, my wife ought to be here soon. I really ought to have gone to the station to get the poor little thing. But there's no time. And I'm tired. I must say, I'm not glad of her. That is to say, I am glad, but I'll be gladder if she only stayed another couple of days with her mother. She want me to spend the whole evening with her tonight. Where, where is he? We have arranged a little excursion for ourselves. All my nerves have already started dancing me about. They are all so strained that I think the very smallest trifle would be enough to make me break into tears. No, I must stay strong as my name is Chippishan. Ah, the nick of time. Darling! We were only speaking of you just now. Were you very dull without me? Are you well? I haven't been home yet. I came here straight from the station. I have a lot, a lot to tell you. Good morning, Kieran. Is everything all right at home? Mama and Katya send their regards. Vasily Andrit sends you a kiss. Aunt sends you a jar of jam and is annoyed because you don't write. Zena sends you a kiss. Oh, if you knew what happened. If you only knew. I'm even frightened to tell you, but I see by your eyes that you're sorry I came. On the contrary, darling. <coughs> oh, poor Katya. I'm sorry for her. This is a bank anniversary, darling. We may get a deputation of the shareholders at any moment. Oh, yes, the anniversary. Congratulations, gentlemen. I wish you. So it means that today is the day of the meeting, the dinner. That's good. And do you remember that beautiful address which you spent such a long time composing for the shareholders? Will it be ready read today? <coughs> My dear, we don't talk about these things. You really better go home. In a minute. In a minute. I'll tell you everything in one minute. And go. I'll tell you from the very beginning. Well, when you were seeing me off, you remember I was sitting next to that stout lady and I began to read. I don't like to talk in the train. I read for three stations and didn't say a word to anyone. Well, then the evening set in and I felt so mournful, you know, with such sad thoughts. A young man was sitting opposite me. Not a bad looking fellow. A brunette. Well, we fell into conversation. A sailor came along. Then some uh, or other student. I told them that I wasn't married and they didn't look after me. We chatted till midnight. The brunette kept on telling me the most awfully funny stories. And the sailor kept on singing. My chest began to ache from laughing. And when the sailor, oh, those sailors, when he got to know me, he was Tatiana. You know what he sang? Oh, Neen, don't let me conceal it. I love Tatiana madly. <coughs> Tanya, dear, you're disturbing Kirin. Go home, dear. Later on. No, no, let him hear. It's awfully interesting. I'll end in a minute. Sarazar came to meet me at the station. Some young man or others turn up. An inspector of taxes, I think quite handsome, especially his eyes. Sarazar introduced me, and the three of us rode off together. It was lovely weather. What are you dragging at me for? What else? I want him myself. I have the honor, Your Excellency. I am the wife of a civil servant, Natasha Fiona Mershitkina. What do you want? Well, you see, Your Excellency, my husband has been ill for five months, and while he was at home getting better, he was suddenly dismissed for no reason, Your Excellency. And when I went to get a salary, they, you see, deducted 24 rubles and 36 kopecks from it. What for, I ask? They said, well, he drew it from the employee's account, and the others had to make it up. How can that be? How could he draw anything without my permission? No, Your Excellency, I'm a poor woman. My lodgers are all I have to live on. I'm weak and defenseless. Everybody does me some harm, and nobody has a kind word for me. Excuse me? Yes, but first, we, last week I suddenly received a letter from my mother. She writes that a certainly Grindela Whiskey has proposed to my sister, Katya, a nice, modest young man with no means of his own. And unfortunately, just think of it, Katya has absolutely gone on him. What's to be done? Mama writes telling me to come at once and influence Katya. Excuse me, you've made me lose my place. You go talking about your mom 
mind, Claudia, and I understand nothing. And I've lost my please. What does that matter? You listen when a lady is talking about you. Why are you so angry today? Are you in love? Excuse me, but what is it? I can't make head or tail of it. Are you in love? Ah, oh, you're blushing. Tanya, dear, do go out into the public office for a moment. I shouldn't be long. All right. I don't understand anything of this. You obviously came to the wrong place, ma'am. Your partition doesn't concern us at all. You should go to the department in which your husband was employed. I've been there a good many times these five months, and they wouldn't even look at my petition. I had given up all hopes, but thanks to my son-in-law, Boris Matias, I thought of coming to you. You go, mother, he says, and apply to Mr. Shipushan. He's an influential man and can do anything. Help me, your excellency. We can't do anything for you, Mrs. Metrukina. You must understand that your husband worked for the Army Medical Department. While wow, this is a private commercial concern, a bank. Do you understand that? Your Excellency, I can produce a doctor's certificate of my husband's illness. Here it is. Just look at it. That's all right. I quite believe you, but it's not our business. It's strange and it's even silly. Surely your husband knows where you ought to apply. Your Excellency, I don't let him know anything. He just cried out. It isn't your business. Get out of this and- Madam, I repeat, your husband worked for the Army Medical Department. And this is a bank. Yes, yes, yes. I understand, my dear. In that case, Your Excellency, just order them to pay me 15 rubles. I don't mind taking that to be going on with. Oof. Chibuchin, I'll never finish the report at this rate. One moment. But do you understand that you're taking this business here is as absurd as if you took a diverse partition to a chemist? It got nothing to do with us. As it happens, madam. This is an anniversary today. We're busy. And somebody may be coming here at any moment. Excuse me. Your Excellency, have pity on me. An orphan. I'm a weak, defenseless woman. I'm tired to death. I'm having trouble with my lodgers and on account of my husband. And I've got the house to look after. And my son-in-law is out of work. Mrs. Matrikina, I, no, excuse me. I can't talk to you. You're disturbing us and wasting our time. What a business, as my name is Chipushin. Kim, will you please explain to Miss Matrikina? What do you want? I'm a weak, defenseless woman. I may look alright, but if you were to take my me to pieces, you wouldn't find a single healthy bin in me. I can hardly stand on my legs and I've lost my appetite. I drank my coffee today and got no pleasure out of it. I ask you, what do you want? Tell them, my dear, to give me 15 rubles, and a month later will do for the rest. But haven't you been told perfectly plainly that this is a bank yes yes and if you live and if you like i can show you the doctor's certificate my doctor i'm asking for what's mine by law i don't want what isn't mine have you got a head on your shoulders my dear i'm asking for what's mine by law i don't want what isn't mine i ask you madam have you got a head on your shoulders i haven't any time to talk to you I'm busy. That way, please. And where's the money? You haven't a head. But, well, never mind, never mind. You can do that to your own wife, but I'm the wife of a civil servant. You can't do that to me. Get out of this! No, 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 none of that. If you don't get out this second, I'll call for the hall porter. Get out! Never mind, never mind. I'm not afraid. I've seen the like of you before, mister. I don't think I've ever seen a more awful woman in my life. Oof! It's given me a headache. I tell you once more. Do you hear me? If you don't get out of this, you old devil, I'll grind you into powder. I've got such a character that I'm perfectly capable of lamming you for life. I can commit a crime. I've heard barking dogs before. I'm not afraid. I've seen the like of you before. I can't stand it. I'm ill. I can't. They've let the bank get filled with women. And I can't finish my report. I, I, I can't. I don't want anybody else's money but my own. According to law, you ought to be ashamed of yourself sitting in a government office in felt boots. We spent the evening at the Brezhnitsky's. Katya was wearing a sky blue silk frock. She looks very well with her hair done over her head and I did her hair myself. She was perfectly fascinating. 
Yes, yes. Fascinating. They may be here any moment. Your Excellency. What else? What do you want? Your Excellency, this man, you told him to look after my affair, but he insults me and says all sorts of things. I'm a weak and defenseless woman. I am, madam. I see it too. And take the necessary steps. Go away now. Later on. My grog coming on. Shippujin? Send for the hall porter and kick her out! No, no. She'll kick up a row, and we aren't the only people in the building. Your Excellency. <laughs> but I've got to finish my report. I won't have time. Your Excellency, when shall I have my money? I want it now. A uh, remarkably beastie woman? Madam, I have already told you this is a bank, a private commercial concern. Be a father to me, Your Excellency. If the doctor's certificate isn't enough, I can get you another from the police. Tell them to give me the money. Oof. Mother, haven't you already been told that you're disturbing them? Mother, beautiful one, nobody will help me. All I do is eat and drink, and just now I didn't enjoy my coffee at all. How much do you want? 24 robos and 36 kopecks. Alright. Here are 25 rubies. Take it and go! <coughs> I thank you very humbly, Your Excellency. It's time I went home. But I haven't done yet. I'll finish in one minute and go away. What a time we have. We went to spend the evening at the Bernersitzky's. It was all right, quite fun, but nothing in particular. Katya's devoted Grendel of Whiskey was there, of course. Well, I talked to Katya, cried and induced her to talk to Grendel of Whiskey. There, of course. Well, I talked to Katya, cried and induced her to talk to Grendel of Whiskey and refuse him. Well, I thought everything settled the best possible way. I've quieted Mama down, saved Katya, and can be quiet myself. What do you think? Katya and I were going along the avenue just before supper, and suddenly we heard a shot. Now I can't talk about it calmly. Oof. We ran to the summer house, and there, their poor Grendel of Whiskey was lying with a pistol in his hand. Your Excellency, can my husband go back to his job? He shot himself right in the heart. Here, and the poor man had fallen down senseless, and he was awfully frightened as he lay there and asked for a doctor. A doctor came soon and saved the unhappy man. No, I can't stand this. I can't stand it. Drive her away. Drive her away, I implore you. Get out of this! Not her, but this one. This awful woman. That one. Get out of this! Get out! What? What are you doing here? Have you taken leave of your senses? It's awful. I'm a miserable man. Drive her out. Out with her. Out of it. I'll cripple you. I'll, br I'll break the law. How dare you, you impudent fellow. I ask you. I implore you. Little fathers, little fathers. Ah, little fathers. Oh, oh. I'm sick. I'm sick. Hit her. Beat her. Cut her into pieces! Oh, oh, little fathers. It's all dark before me. Ah! Deputation. Reputation. Occupation. Get out! I may break the law! Deeply respected and dear spinach, throwing a respiratory glance at the past of our financial administration and reviewing in our minds at a gradual development, we receive an extremely satisfactory impression. It is true that in the first period of its existence, the inconsiderable amount of its capital and the absence of serious operations of any description, and also the indefinite aims of this bank, made us an extreme attached importance to the question raised by Hamilton, to be or not to be, and at that one time there was even voices to be heard demanding liquidation. But at that moment, you became head of our concerns. Your, no your knowledge energizes and your native tact were the cause of the extraordinary success and widespread extension, the reputation of the bank. <clears throat> the reputation of the bank. Oh, oh. Water. Water. The reputation of the bank. <clears throat> the reputation of the bank has been raised by you to such heights that we are now rivals of the best foreign concerns. Reputation, reputation, occupation. Two friends that had a walk at night held converse by the pale moonlight. Oh, tell me not that you this vein, that jealousy has turned my brain.
Then throwing an objective glance at the present condition of things, we deeply respected and dear Andrei Andanovich. In that case, we'll do it later on. Yes, later on. If you want to hear Cherikov, a civil servant, a clerk in the Ministry of Public Parks, had any passion in life at all, it was the theater. He certainly had hopes and ambitions for higher office and had dedicated his life to hard work, zeal, and patience. Still, he would, he would not deny himself his one great pleasure. So he purchased two tickets in the very best section of the theater, the opening night performance of Rostov's The Bearded Countess. As fortune would have it into the theater that night, came his respected superior, General Mikhail Rastikov, the Minister of Public Parks himself. Uh, good evening, General. Hmm? What? Oh, yes, good evening. Oh, permit me, sir. I, I am Cherjikov, Ivan Ilyich. This is, this is a great honor for me, sir. Hmm, yes. Uh, um, like yourself, dear General, I do serve the Ministry of Public Parks. That is to say, I serve you who is indeed himself the Minister of Public Parks. I'm Assistant Chief Clerk in the Department of Trees and Bushes. Ah, uh, yes. Keep up the good work. Uh, lovely trees and bushes this year. Very nice. <laughs> my, my wife would very much like to say hello, General. This is she, my wife, Madam Chair Jacob. How do you do? My pleasure. My pleasure, General. How do you do? Madam Brasilov, my wife, Madam Chair Jacob. How do you do, Madam Brasilov? How do you do? I am my wife's husband. How do you do, Madam Braslov? <laughs> sorry, terribly sorry. Uh, I hope you enjoy the play, sir. Uh, I will if I can watch it. Feeling quite pleased with himself for having made the most of this golden opportunity. Opportunity. If I am here, Cherikov sat back to enjoy the period Countess. He was no longer a stranger to the Minister of Public Parks. They had become, if one wanted, to be generous about the matter, familiar with each other, and then quite suddenly, without any warning, like a bolt from a grey thundering sky, Ivan Ilyich Cherikov reared his head back and... Uh, oh, oh, oh my goodness! I'm sorry, Your Excellency. I'm so terribly sorry. Never mind. It's all right. All right? It's certainly not all right. It's unpardonable. It was, it was monstrous of me. Uh, you make too much of the matter. Let it rest. How can I let it rest? It was inexcusable. Permit me to wipe your neck, General. It's the least I can do. Leave it be. That's all. It's all right, I say. But I splattered you. Sir, your, your head is splattered. It was an accident, I assure you, but it's disgusting. I'm sorry, my apologies. The, th the thing is, Your Excellency, it came completely without warning. It was out of my nose before I could stifle it. Shh. Yes, yes, certainly. I'm sorry. It's not a gold, if that's what you were worrying about, sir. It's it's probably a particle of dust in the nostril. But try as he might, Cherikov could not put the incident out of his mind. Sneeze no more than an innocent anatomical accident grew out of all proportion in his mind until it resembled the angry roar of a cannon aimed squarely at the enemy camp. He played the incident back in his mind, slowing the procedure down so he could view again in horror this infamous deed. Charming, charming. Yes, charming. Charming, simply charming. Wasn't it charming, my dear? I found it utterly charming. I was completely charmed by it. Um, excuse me, Excellency. Who's tapping me? Someone's tapping me. Who's the tapping? I'm dapping, sir. I'm the dapper. Jerjikov. Stand back, dear. It's the sneezer. No, no. It, it, it's all right. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all sneezed out. I was just concerned about your going out into the night air with a damp head. Oh, that. It was a trifle. A mere faux pas. Forget it, young man. Amusing play, don't you think? Didn't you find it amusing? Uh, amusing? Oh, oh my, oh my goodness! Yes, ha, 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 so, so true. Ha, ha. I haven't laughed as much in years. Ha, ha. Which part interests you the most? 
the sneeze. When I sneezed on you, it, it was unforgivable, sir. Forget it, young man. Come, my dear. It looks like it's gonna rain. I don't want to get my head wet again. You shouldn't let people sneeze on you, dear. You're not be not to be sneezed at. I'm ruined. Ruined. He'll have me fired from trees and bushes. They'll sell me down to branches and twigs. Come, Ivan. What? You mustn't let it concern you. It was just a harmless little sneeze. The general's probably forgotten it already. Do you really think so? No. I'm scared, Ivan. And so they walked home in despair. Perhaps I should send him a nice gift. Maybe some Turkish owls. Cherenkov's one promising career had literally been blown away. Why did this happen to me? Why did I go to the theater at all? Why did I sit in the balcony with people of our own class? They love sneezing on each other. P perhaps if I were to call on the general and explain matters again, and, but in such a charming, honest, and self-effacing manner, he would have no choice to be but to forgive me. No, no. If I expect to become a gentleman, I must behave like one. And so the morning came. It so happened this was the day the general listened to petitions, and since there were 50 or 60 petitions ahead of Cherry Call, he waited for mo from morning to late, late afternoon. Next, next! I'm not next, Your Excellency. I'm last. Very well then, last. That's me, sir. What is your petition? I have no petition. Sir, I'm not a petitioner. Then you waste my time. Do you not recognize me, sir? We met last night under rather explosive circumstances. I'm, I'm the splatterer. The what? The sneezer. The, the one who sneezed? The sneezing splatterer? Indeed. And what is it you want? A gesundheit? No, Excellency. Your forgiveness. I just wanted to point out that there was no political or anti-social motivation behind my sneeze. It was a, it was a non-partisan, non-violent act of God, and I cursed the day the protuberance formed itself on my face. It's a hateful nose, sir, and I'm not responsible for his indiscretions. Punish that which committed the crime, but absolve the innocent body behind it. Exile my nose, but forgive me, your kindship. Forgive me. My dear young man. I'm not angry with your nose. I'm too busy to have time with your nasal problems. I said I suggest you go home, take a hot or a cold bath, take something, but don't bother me with this silly business again. Jibber, jibber, jibber. That's all I've heard all day. Jibber, jibber, jibber. Thank you, sir. God bless you and your wife and your household. May your days be, be sweet and may your nights be better than your days. The feeling of relief that came over Cherry Cop was enormous. May the birds sing in the morning at your window. May the coffee in your cup be strong and hot. The weight of the burden that was lifted was inestimable. I worship the chair that you sit on, and the uniform you wear that sits on the chair that I worship. He walked home, singing and whistling like a lark. Life is surely a marvel, a joy, have heavenly paradise. Oh God, am I happy. And yet... And yet... When, I, when he arrived home, he began to think, have I been the butt of a cruel and thoughtless joke? Had the minister toyed with him? If he had no intention of punishing me, why did he torment me so unmercifully? If the sneeze meant so little to the minister, why did he deliberately cause Cherdikov to rift in his bed? To twist in agony the entire night. Cherdikov was furious! I am furious! He foamed and fumed and paced the night through. And in the morning, he calls out to his wife, Sonia! Sonia, I have been humiliated. You, Ivan, who would humiliate you? You're such a kind and generous person. Who? I'll tell you who. General, General Blaslov, the Minister of Public Parks. What did he do? The swine. I was humiliated in such subtle fashion, it was almost indiscernible. The man's cunning is only equal to his cruelty. He practically forced me to come to his office to grovel and to beg on my knees. I was reduced to a gibbering idiot. You were that reduced? I must go back. I must go back and tell him what I think of him. The lower classes must speak up. The world must be made safe so that men of all nations and creeds, regardless of color or religion, will be free to sneeze on their superiors. It is he who will be humiliated by I. And so, the next morning, Cherikov came to humiliate he. Last... Well? Well? 
Well, you say, do you not recognize me, Your Excellency? Look at, look at my face. Yes, you're quite correct. It is I once again. It is you once again who? Jerjikov, Excellency. I have returned ne having neither taken a hot bath or a cold one. Who let this filthy man in? What is it? What is it? What is it, you ask? You sit there behind your desk and ask, what is it? You sit in your lofty position as general and minister of public parks, a member in high standing among the upper class, and ask me, a lowly civil servant, what is it? You sit there with full knowledge that there is no equality in this life, that there are those of us who serve and those that are served, those of us that obey and those that are obeyed, those that, of us that who bow and those that are bowed to, that in this life certain events take place that cause some of us to be humiliated and those that are cause of that humiliation. And you still ask, what is it? What is it? Don't stand there gibbering like an idiot. What is it you want? I'll tell you what I want. I wanted to apologize again for sneezing on you. I wasn't sure I made it clear. It was an accident. An accident. I assure you. Out! Out, you idiot! Fool! Imbecile! Get out of my sight! I never want to see you again. If you ever cross my line of vision, I'll have you exiled forever. What's your name? Jerjikov! Ch you germ spreader, you maggot, you insect. You're lower than an insect. You're the second cousin to a cockroach, the son in law of a bedbug. You're the nephew of a ringworm. You're nothing. Nothing, you hear me? Nothing! At that moment, something broke loose inside of Cherikov, something so deep and vital, so organic, that the damage that was done seemed irreparable. Something drained from him that can only be described as the very life force itself. The matter was over for once, for all, forever. What happened next was quite simple. Ivan Ilyich Cherikov arrived at home, removed his coat, lay down on the sofa and died. How cheerful and playful I was before the freedom got locked in a cage. I used to go anywhere I wanted to go, malls, restaurants, gardens, and resorts. I could meet my friends, and nothing could stop me from feeling the satisfaction of liberty. I was at home when the lockdown was announced, school changed to online learning, and I could rest at home all day. Delight and gladness came first, then sadness accompanied by grief, spread all over my mind after realizing I'm like the bird in a cage, being restrained. There I was, sitting in front of my laptop all day, attending online school, doing homework, and watching shows. I was experiencing a new way of living. After reading newspapers, my fears about COVID-19 were growing. I fear it would spread everywhere, to me, and most importantly, to my family. As time goes, my loneliness grows. I started to do different things just to keep my mind off the news. There I was. After a month of lockdown, Still sitting on a couch day after day, thinking about interesting things I could play. Nothing came to my mind. Only distractions and tediousness were slowly filling up. Nonetheless, the internet, as a light in a darkness, erased all of the pressures and drowsiness. After the teacher announced the arrival of summer break, Bliss and exhilaration came first, thinking about relaxing things I could play. Then, unease and anxiousness arrived. After thinking about the pandemic, and I could not go and play.
and anguish and sorrow came at last. Well, realizing joy and freedom were fleeting away, what should I do but rest? Summer break, hot and sunny, rest and lonely. Nothing could make me happy. What should I do? I often ask myself this question. Sleeping, except everything else, was the only decision I made. After eight months of lockdown, things were finally about to change. School principal just announced that the students were soon allowed to go to school. I was excited about it at first, thinking about meeting with friends, chatting with classmates, doing experiments in the science labs. Looking back, the repetitive days, eat, go to class, and sleep every day, I could finally escape away. Then, think about the pandemic, COVID cases climbing up, coughs, sneezes, and fevers everywhere. It almost became my darkest fear. Until the message, as a dark cloud in the clear blue sky, brought to me by my parents that I could not go to school, suffocated my fantasy right away, leaving me. With my repetitive days, how frustrated I was after hearing the news about not coming to school. Every day, seeing other students appearing in school, I was longing for the same. I wanted to do experiments in the science lab, doing equations on math class whiteboard, and most of all, eating lunch in the cafeteria. After one month of waiting. The school finally closed again. Seeing everyone sitting in front of their laptops, my feeling lightened. After a while, winter break arrived. I could play and rest. For one week, I did nothing but fell asleep. Repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. The school became physical again. Seeing classmates attending physical school, my mind was filled with jealousy and hopelessness. Then, the virus teased us again. Lockdown was reinforced. The school was closed, and Ramadan arrived. I was restrained again. Spring is here. It's time to cheer. Goodbye smog. Goodbye masks. Wait, what? Never mind. Um, here comes COVID nineteen. A new surprise. Don't get excited. It's time to cry. There go hugs, hanging out, and fun. Locked indoors, trapped worse than before. Can't believe it's been a year. Will we ever get to escape from here? Days of lazing on the couch, daydreaming, doodling, lounging around, trapped inside these four walls. With dangerous enemies waiting beyond, days of lazing on the couch, drawing, dancing, feeling down, packed in like sardines as I can. Day one, day three, day five, day ten. Days everything blurs to the net. Everything feels like a mess. Days of lazing on the couch, waiting, waiting, always down, staring at a screen all day. Everything hurts my brain. First class, second, third, and fourth. It's over now, but still more work. But mom told me to be over soon, and dad said we'd swim in the pool. We could have fun with friends all day, but how long will life be this way? Assignments piled up on my desk, now swept away. It's no longer a mess. Freedom's here along at last. We've waited a year, and it's finally passed. But this isn't how I thought it would be. No friends. No family. Summer is here. We're supposed to cheer, but this time summer isn't clear. The way dark clouds try and hide the sun, similar to how COVID nineteen spreads, stopping all our summer fun. Living on repeat. What a shame. Is this how our summer will be wasted away? No traveling. No playing. No fun. 
No friends, no field trips, no more. It's done. Today's the same, and so is tomorrow. But it's not satisfying living life in sorrow. Each day, do something new. Try to enjoy it before it slips away from beneath you. And yet here we go all over again, starting a new school year. How long has it been? How hasn't this virus met its end? Not sure if joy or sadness suits the occasion. Back to school and get on a screen all day again. A strange routine brings reform. School time, homework, less time to be bored. A year later and I'll be off to high school. It's been cut in half, so long middle school, but I can't help but be disheartened. Life on a screen is just a sad reproduction. Real life is filled with family, friends, and fun. How in the world has a new school year begun? A brand new grade lost its brand new joy. This year feels just like a broken toy, waiting it can, until it can be replaced with something that will bring a smile to our face. Waiting, waiting for so long, I've missed the smile, the warmth, the hugs, chatting with friends, days with no end, yet it came to an end, can we go back again? Running, playing, all the fun, laughing, smiling, warmth and hugs, seeing friends face to face, though I must admit, it's not the same, masked and wrapped and sanitized, my eyes are itchy, my hands are dry, but talking in person can't be replaced, even if I can't see a smile on their face. Just a few friends here, now school seems extremely weird, but before you can breathe a sigh of relief, you find yourself back on screens. Dull online classes, what was it we learned? Even duller winter break, it's much worse than before. Then, before I know it, we're back in school? But this time, my class is down to two. Two weeks here, two weeks there, another at school, then we're kicked out, is this fair? The world has finally made up its mind. Virtual school it is, to the end of time. Vaccines bring hope of returning to normal, but an entire year's gone, will we ever be normal? Waiting for spring break, I hear the people ache. School announces an early break, adults concerned, pandemic emerge. I scream out joy, I didn't know it would go wrong. Lockdown starting now, schedule all changed, timeline all arranged. It is great, less school time, increased fun time. Nothing can stop me, I am free. 6 a.m. wake up, 90 minutes school time, school dress codes now all gone. This is the time I wished upon. One month have passed, Koreans plan to go home. But all airport is now closed. Islamabad is our only hope. Koreans ride the bus, 5 hours feel like 5 days. Finally arrived, wait for left 5 hours, and let's go to our home. I am in Korea for the last two months. School still goes on and it finally starts to end. Waiting for a summer break, waiting for happy days. Korea is very safe, but still be aware. Lots of plans which I planned. I wish break comes. I need some rest. Vacation now started. I wanted to rest, but my mom gives me no rest. Demanded to study, demanded to get ready for the 8th grade. This feels like nuts. I now grunt. This is not I wished for. Ding, ding. Email comes. No, no, it finally came back. My greatest fear is now back. Test. Homework! Endless work! This is not real! I cannot believe it! New teacher, new grade! I want freedom, not a school named Demon! The school now started. My life is gone! 
stupid homework, stupid classwork, useless works which I won't even use. Have I learned anything from these works? Have I discovered anything which is new? Repetitive life, staying all night, school named knife, stabbing me all night, too less break time, too much work, please free me from this cage before I rampage. It's been hard to focus, pay attention, stay on task. Was there really a time we didn't need masks? We started the year full of hopes, dreams, and ambition. But all put on hold because of COVID's ascension. At times, all our efforts feel hopeless and gone. We feel helpless, frustrated, and so for a long. Traffic disappeared and our community vanished. Offices closed and to homes we were banished. Commencement couldn't happen because it was all gloom. Pajamas adorned at home and shown off on Zoom. As Thanksgiving neared, people cursed COVID-19. Because of the virus, our turkeys were in quarantine. This is bad. We are all sad. No more fun. It has just begun. We need to be aware, but people are unaware. Stay at your home and don't go out to Rome. Oh God, when will this end? COVID-19 needs to be dead. I want to meet my friends, but it all depends. The situation is bad. And we are all sad. How long left, God? Please make it soon. It's already another June. This might last forever. Because it's not getting any better. Thoughts from home. We've been in lockdown for quite a while. It's getting hard to raise a smile. I sometimes force a grin, but everything is right then. The government tells us to stay put, but everyone is just moving it. They crowd the beaches, pack the parks, and they queue for hours outside. However, lockdown made me happy since I could play games. However, lockdown was tiring, and my life felt like it was expiring. But I still felt excited, and I was delighted. Even though we could stay home, we had no place to roam. I was happy that school closed. I could play games, but my day was lame. The lockdown was scary. So I ate some berries. I slept in my bed, but when I awoke, I crept around. Whenever I played games, they shouted my name. Roses are red, violets are blue. I felt so happy that the sky turned blue. The work was lessening, and on my face, <laughs> there was a smoke. More time can be spent with family and no more anxiously waiting for school to close. I can now play games and stay up as late as I want to. However, sometimes I think I might be getting chased. I'm trapped in my house because of COVID. The only thing I can do is stay inside. The boredom consumes me, and all I can hear at night is turn off the lights. Most of the time while I was playing games, most of the time I was playing games, but when I went downstairs, it felt like a crowd. I spent time with my family, and some of us even played games. A birthday was coming up, but because of COVID, it was way harder to plan than expected. I liked sleeping whenever I wanted. I would stay up, I would stay up late and wake up late. 
I went outside and had a life. I enjoyed it a lot, but then went straight inside. One time, I stayed up for two days. I felt exhausted and took a long nap. However, school came back, and I forgot that it existed. But now that we're here, I don't like my peers. I try to sleep, but I just can't. I stare at the screen for five hours a day. But not that, it's, not that it mattered. I stare at the screen for way, for way longer than five hours. Anyways. I pray so much for me and my grades. I have fights with my family, friends, and my dog. He barks, I bark. And he gets offended and goes mad. I This time, I have an excuse for the dog in my homework. But my, but my, but my network it just sucks. There's so much work and such little time. When will we be free? Maybe I should just steal a key. However, throughout this whole pandemic, I just realized all we have is online work. My dog can't eat my homework. So I, I, so I stress so much that I go berserk. I'm wasting away under the light. I stay fatigued from day to night. I wake up and then rest my head my mind is blank, but yet so full. It feels asleep, but it will push and pull about things I forgotten like the light of day. I hope this virus will cease to stay. Although it seems once in a while, I may even crack a smile. When I see the green of the leaves and tree, I see them when I walk alone with me. This is me before COVID. I was happy and I was sure. But then I heard that school is over. An email broke this news to me. I was happy because I was free. I thought quarantine would be good, but it was really, really bad. This got me all sad. And now I'm stuck at home with no lads. I want this situation to end and go out with my friends. Come on, COVID. Your time is over. Leave us alone and let us have sleepovers. I want to meet my friends. I'm so bored. I started playing chess. I want to go out and eat food. I'm done with eating home food. Okay, now let's wear masks, let's kill COVID and sanitize. COVID is here, everyone has disappeared. Roads are empty and everyone is in fear. People aren't quarantined and people aren't being safe. Everyone's getting COVID. Oh God, please take COVID away. People aren't dying, people are crying. But COVID here is ruining our living. Day 30, full of fear. Corona is here, everyone is inside, full of tears. We thought this would be temporary, but this just became daily. Please God, forgive us. We are done here. We need some entertainment. We need some fast food. We need to meet our friends. We need to connect. We need to enjoy. We need to go out. But COVID is here, making us scream and shout. Summer is finally here. Summer, summer, summer. I waited for you so long. But now you're here, no one is here, and there is no fun. I'm now sad. So far, the summer break is really bad. COVID is killing us, and it is very, very sad. COVID, 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 why are you here? We don't like you at all. Please leave, it's been a year. Fear, fear, fear is what I have in mind. We want to be normal and go out and dine. I want to travel, I want to fun, but in real life, I only sit below the sun. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to get COVID. Please God forgive us, we are done here. Running around the outdoors, wind blowing, trees growing, feeling as if I could soar. But that, that was all before. 
tense breathing, worried feelings, catastrophe all around. Yet, no one dared make a sound. Friends, where were they? Separated, to my dismay. I missed the company of intense laughter. Truly, I missed the banter. Keeping busy, this, that, this, that. Anything to keep my mind off the fact that we... We may never go back. Repetitive, again and again and again and again. Days felt like years. Soon, there were no tears. All day, every day, we were discovering new fears. Summer was just too hot, too long. Days only dragged on one day after the next, and all I could do was rest. But it didn't feel like rest anymore. The unsettling quiet, the lack of noise out on the street. I had nowhere to go, but, but that one seat. I went for a walk every other day, even meeting a few friends along the way, walking together, seeming as usual, although the dull look in one's eyes can't always be denied. Would last year repeat the next? I wasn't even in town, thousands of miles away, yet I could still hear the sounds of intense happiness from my friends connecting ties with loose ends. Excitement once faded away. We aren't learning. There's not much to say. The chance of physical school? It's been half a year since I've stepped foot in a place so far, yet so near. Desperate to feel the walls of a classroom for everything seemed so bleak. I hadn't felt the company of my classmates. COVID was truly at its peak. Cases went down, schools planned to open all year round. Cases went up, now the school is empty, not a single sound. Non permissible to go physically. My parents were in fear, knowing that COVID was lurking around each corner, very, very near. A few of my friends got the chance to go, but as we know, all good things come to an end. Everything was normal. School was fun. Friends were there. Little did I know a storm was coming. COVID was spreading. Schools were closing. Locked up in a room with nothing to do. Only windows to see through. Lockdown has started. Thought it was going to be a holiday. Playing games, watching TV, staying up late. But it's the opposite. It's just work. No fun. Shops are closed. Stuck in my room with no chance of getting out. I wish things could go back to a simpler time. The lockdown has lasted long. It's hard to be happy, easy to be sad, getting lazier, awake till three, wake up at nine. We'll find the way to go back to simpler times. It started in spring, it's summer now. Breaks are here, but still no fun. As sadness settles in, my want to be free grows. Suck in my room, just wanna see the sun. The worst season, too hot, too humid. Everything scores to nothing. COVID is growing. People are panicking. Rules everywhere, but no one's following. We are back. School has begun. Summer has ended. Time for fall. School is different now. It's online. It's just more work and no fun. We're still stuck with no hope. COVID is getting bigger and people are just getting stupider. The winter is coming. Thanksgiving has passed. Schools opened then closed again. Wanting to feel the sun, sun's warm embrace, trapped in my room with nothing to do. It's been a year now. The pain, the depression slowly taking me in. School isn't helping. Eye pain, headaches, COVID-19 turned into COVID-21. Am I alive? Please help me.
in the school without masks, sitting with my friends completing the task. Suddenly heard about the new disease. I wanted to ask an expertise. I was having too much fun that I didn't care. I wasn't even aware this was going to get this serious. Got an email from school about this COVID-19. We were going to have two weeks of spring break. I was happy and sad at the same time. Happy because we didn't have school. Sad because I couldn't meet my friend. Thought it would come to an end, but it never did. Sitting around on the couch, thinking about how, how much fun this is going to be. Having all this time to myself, playing games and lounging around. Having McDonald's every day, this is the best time of my life. Sleeping late at night, having no worries. Now it's just like a dream that just became true. Lockdown all around Lahore, shops are closed, malls are closed. Can't meet my friends in real life, but can't play games online. It is like the walls are getting old. Staring at them, I'm getting bored. The virtual school has just started. Having to wake up for school again. Doing homework is lame. Who is to blame? On a call with my friends, that's the closest thing we can get to each other in this pandemic. It feels like I'm in jail. I wish I could just get bailed. But if I do, then I will fail. This is getting old. Holidays are around the corner. The weather is getting warmer. My excitement is going up. Now I can sleep all day. I can play games all day. I can do anything I wish. But what I can't do is I can't ride my bike. I can't be with my friends. This is getting quite bizarre. Now the second wave has hit. This summer break wasn't a vacation. All I did was, all I wanted to do was flee my nation. Everywhere, everywhere was illness and size. There was emptiness and lies. All I could do was sleep away. And slowly, I was fading away. Time doesn't pass by. I wish I could just meet a few friends. I had too many restrictions. Couldn't meet people, couldn't greet people. Wearing masks are so bizarre. School has started too soon. Didn't it just close in June? Sitting in, sitting in front of the screen all day. The next summer break is in May. The work is getting quite harder. Waking up every day doing the same thing. Assignments are piling up. I'm not even smiling. When will this disease meet its end? I can't comprehend it anymore. I can't ignore it anymore. It is just worsening. Maybe it's just time we accept it. Life is the same now. Nothing new, nothing fun. The school year has just begun. School is reopening again. It doesn't feel the same. But, but who is to blame? Will I, will I go back to physical school? Times have changed. Online schooling is the normal routine. Wake up every day knowing it won't end. Thinking of what is next. Whatever is next better be the best. I'm really fed up of this year. It has been a waste of time. Haven't learned something new or something fine. I won't be attending physical school again. Not until this all ends. I was at home playing video games and suddenly on the news I heard school announced closure for two weeks too. I'm used, confused and happy too. My parents nightmare and my desire come true. I also got an email from the school saying we are getting two weeks off for corona being cruel. Government says it's an epidemic outbreak saying everyone's life is at stake. All I could do is sit in my room and use perfume. Lockdown was new for me. Boring, snorting, exploring too, not miss spending any more time, instead letting my talents outshine. Doing things I like just like playing video games or cycling outside. Quarantine really got me, sad, mad, feeling lack too. One month into lockdowns, feeling like I deserve a crown. Seeing my friends on the screen while also watching Wolverine. Sad, mad and even glad lockdown was good and bad. Home all day, maybe bored all day. Summer was about to begin and we still can't go out the door. Because of the virus, can't go to the market or you go for a swim. Because of the virus, I can't even go for a trim. Don't go to crowded places, don't be one of the thousand cases. Visit a doctor if you need care. Now make others all aware. Summer vacation finally came along. 
playing video games all day long. Can't meet my friends, missing my weekend. Can't leave the country, the government shut down the entry. Staying up all night, watching the dark night. School starting again, I don't want to attend. Summer break wasn't so good, just because Corona wasn't understood. Online learning was the best, got a break from all the tests. The learning part was a bit more tough. All the classwork became homework and we had to learn so much stuff. School's opening changed me again. Had to work double just cause I was home. Every day was the same, only have Corona to blame. The school sent an email to choose between physical and virtual school. I wanted to do virtual because all my friends were doing it too. But my mom had other ideas which I wanted to undo. My mom sent me to physical school because she thought virtual would make me look like a fool. I was sad, mad and unglad too. At this time, I felt like even getting the flu. When I met my friends, I felt happy. When I went to school, I felt crappy. School reopens, but everyone's still broken. My spring break's here, my calendar's clear. Sending home all day, waiting for school to end and celebrating in May. COVID arrived, school closed, made me happy, I called my friends, played video games, and I looked at the date, and I realized it was Friday the 13th. I thought it would be easy, but now I'm sitting home, all alone, one week in, and I'm sad. COVID came, attacked my friends, broke our hearts, made us weak. COVID shut down parks, shut down streets, I am bored, I am tired, and when we get sick, we're locked in our rooms, is this a punishment? Feels so, the streets are lonely, is 2020 cancelled? Coughing is forbidden, sneezing is, is a, makes you a victim, six feet away, and you'll live to see another day. I can't even give my friend a handshake anymore, all the fun is gone, the chains are on, COVID is everywhere, but people are still unaware. The, the, but co schools are ending, but COVID is just beginning. The world is going crazy. God, summer break is near. It's summer break now, but I have restrictions. COVID has ruined us. A handshake can kill you. The quarantine can save you. COVID is growing while the world is suffering. God, set our minds in relief. Summer break is over. Schools are starting. Why are schools starting? I'm in my room all day looking at a screen for six hours straight. School is boring. Work is piling. I just want to leave and finally be able to sleep. When the call ends, you know what's next. Another boring class. It's just one big hell loop. I can't take it anymore. I spent my days in my room 24 hours in and I'm still stuck in my room. One year later, schools are opening with all new rules. Co quarantine is ending. Friends can be seen from a distance, but talking is restricted. Handshakes are restricted. Physical school is useless. Virtual school is lifeless. The options are gone. The masks are on. Is this the end? Ready to go back to school. That's until an email got sent. Suddenly, a notification from a friend. Schools were closing, but didn't spring break just end? A minute of happiness, a minute of confusion. Was this my new life? School on a virtual platform. Oh, how I thought it'd be fun, but COVID for the long run. I didn't know how to feel. It all felt unreal. Confusion was now arising. COVID on the rising. Will this go on forever? Or will it end before December? Oh, how I want to meet my friends. But this lockdown and full send. One week, seven days, 
168 hours. COVID has main power. It all came as a surprise. A bad routine on the rise. Wow, everything's a bore. I wish things went back to how they were before. I still thought lockdown was temporary, but now we're at day 30. I miss the physical interaction, but Corona's the main distraction. Everything's repetitive. A normal schedule? Discredited. Losing myself to all this time. I hope everything becomes fine. It doesn't though. It seems like time stopped. I thought COVID cases had dropped. Oh, how I thought this was it. But the next day it hit. Lockdown for me was gone. But things were opposite the norm. Everywhere you went, people thought you had the disease. Mass became mandatory. A second way to breathe. Now we're three months into this. I had hoped for the bliss, but things weren't the same. We were entering a whole new game. Now summer was here. It was just another lockdown to bear. School was a distraction, but now there's no interaction. COVID cases had dropped, but the anxiety hadn't stopped. Sleep had become a time pass. I never thought I'd say this, but I kind of missed class. At this point, it's the new normal, they say. Just sit in front of your screen and stay. My The work as a double, my head in a bubble. It's the new normal, they say. Do your work and go on with the day. Social poverty is what invades us. Electu intellectual poverty that sinks us. It's the new normal, they say. But it's causing me dismay. A bad routine in the mix. A sleep schedule to fix. It's the new normal, they say. But now it's almost a year into this dismay. We began at a week, but now we're looking at a year. New perspectives. Vaccines effective. The sorrow of a new reality. Wearing masks, a mentality. The urge for things to go back running on a wrong-sided track. The COVID cases drop. You think it's going to stop. But a new strain hits. This time, it takes you bit by bit. Mixed feelings, looking at the same feelings. A sense of being trapped. This one year, get napped. 2021 was supposed to be the year, but now the future is unclear. Waiting for the day where masks will go away. Every day is the same. Virtual school feels like a gone game. I want to feel normal again. I want to see the sun again. Sitting in a classroom with my friends, talking to. Then the teacher shares with us something alarming, which when I heard seemed more charming. Spring break was here, and that originally made me cheer. Friends, peers, and so many more heard about Corona a bit before but we're not sure what it meant for sure. Supposedly left me a little unsure. Suddenly, schools were closing. Because of this virus, I was just supposing. Next came quarantine, not so bad. Got a break, made me glad. Something strange about this virus though. That part of the situation, yes, it did blow. I thought this break would be quite fun. Look at and enjoy the shining sun. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. As well as that, there was joy. Spring break seemed quite cool. And there was a break from school. 
finally time to relax. Done with those homework stacks. Then later, arouse the term lockdown. For a while, it did stick around. Shops got closed, but open too. Restaurants and stores, but we got drive throughs Work to do, assigned by school. Doing homework too. Other stuff, sometimes maybe even drew. Virtual school, maybe done. I could go out, maybe for a run. Summer holidays are here. Summer holidays after a year. No more school. A break seems rather cool. Time to have fun with school right now. I am done. Having fun. Break has come. COVID is still here. It still has not disappeared. I sort of hope for school to begin. Meeting my friends might make me grin. And school once again seems to be a nice plan. Hopefully things will be better. Like before COVID began. Time for school. Meeting friends seem quite cool. I hear that it will be virtual too. I kind of wanted to attend it in person. This sort of blue. School is done at home on Google Chrome. It's all right, I suppose. On my screen, sometimes it froze. Learning at times is sometimes not as easy. And sometimes the screen can make you queasy. But we need to be aware this virus that's here. After a while, it was time to smile. School was back, but the fun had slipped through a crack. Then later, the lockdown was greeted. In school, no longer would I be seated. Online, again, I was so. I went with it though. COVID cases increase, but also at times decrease. Winter break is finally here. Time to finally cheer. When the break is over, school starts, moreover. Virtual it is. In class, might be time to take a quiz. Then time for school to open. Yes, does it reopen? I think that I attend for a while, but there I only stay for a while. It closes, then at home. But next time, I do not come, at least from what I recall. And now, school's shut over all. Hopefully, COVID will be all right. Then we can walk freely, the sun in sight. Hopefully, the situation will be smooth. Hope for it to improve. At school, being physically close to my friends, oh how I believed this would never end. I never realized how much I cherished this. I only realized it when it all perished. Sitting at home, looking at the warm, gleaming sun, disturbed by some news, life wouldn't be so fun. Going into lockdown? Has something long begun? Processing the news, what did it mean? Soon reality hit me. This was the age of COVID-19. Staying at home, this felt new. Playing games all day. To my laptop, I was stuck like glue. 
No physical school? My dream came true. Staring at the window, enjoying my view. No more stress. Assignments were done. Waking up at seven, the days with that were none. Living the life I dreamed I had, who knew this lockdown would make me feel so glad? Watching movies. Before I knew it, the series was done. Time passed quickly while I had fun. Everything was enjoyable. I felt like I had won. It's been a month. Time passed quickly. It felt blunt. When would it end? I felt confused. We didn't know, but life was unamused. Every day it felt the same. Who knew staying out in all day would feel so lame? When will it end? And who's to blame? Little did we know, life would never be the same. Sitting in my room, I miss my friends. Missing my freedom, the lockdown extends. I thought it would end, and I was wrong. The coronavirus pandemic never felt so long. Usually, I would excitedly look towards summer, but because of COVID, who knew this time it would be such a bummer? Bored, trapped, in the same room. I wish this madness would end soon. Usually, summer was fun. A time of the year I would look forward to. I miss walking on the beach under the hot gleaming sun. This year, it won't be the same. We thought it'd be over, yet summer came. Time passed, nothing changed. Staying in all day, my efforts of quarantining feel vain. Repeating, repeating, repeating. Sometimes I feel so bored, my heart would want to stop beating. Half of my summer, non-existent, felt like a fraud. Empty days wasted on COVID, a virus way too persistent and broad. Yet I have hope, I found a flight. Soon, I felt nothing but being in delight. Finally, I was freed. The coronavirus caused me so much greed. Walking on the beach in my homeland, finally, something that was new, that wasn't so bland. Having fun back at home, I felt so relieved. Now I could freely roam. Time had passed, summer was gone. I woke up early, I began to yawn. Soon, online school would start. Doing school from a different country, it seemed apart. This was tiring. All day looking at the screen, the thought of physical school made me gleam. Virtual school was no longer fun. What I once hoped for, my head spun. Online learning and an overspill of work. Online learning, that word no longer made me smirk. I despised it. This type of learning was wrong. I hated online school. I've had this feeling for long. Waking up at seven, torturous hell. Doing virtual school, I wanted to yell. This way of learning was hopeless. Honestly, virtual learning is a mess. The opportunity to come back. At first, I took it for granted. Was this happening? After everything is so frantic? Maybe it was time to go back to school. I went to school. It was time for a change. Just when I realized, near my friends, I couldn't be in a six-foot range. This felt odd, surely strange, seeing their faces, countless looks exchanged. Going to school, endless restrictions, living like this almost felt like fiction. Two weeks later, school closed down, just when I thought life would turn around. Once more they ask, I don't want to go. Physical school felt like a prison. In it, time passed slow. I want to go back to normal, just like one year ago. On and off, can't they decide? School was open one week, and the next they would hide. Time passed, the decision was made. No more physical school, the entire grade. I wish school could open. Life feels so mundane. School's almost done. Yet everything stayed the same. Another grade of my life wasted on what seems like a game.